In Florida, applicants are required to apply twice for PUA and be denied twice before going forward. <laughs> this is a ridiculous mob show update for Thursday, May 21st. Thanks for tuning in. This is LLA. As always, a like and subscribe to this channel and drop your comments below, and we may feature them in tomorrow's recording. But right now, we're getting to a lot of your incredible questions from Wednesday's taping. But first, the news. One Florida viewer <laughs> dropped a surprising bobshell. We have been reporting for weeks that some states require you as an independent contractor to first apply for UI benefits, unemployment, and get a denial because you're an independent contractor, rightfully so, before applying for PUA to get unemployment, to, before getting independent contractor benefits under PUA. Well, one Florida viewer dropped this note yesterday from Camp Kiefer. Florida here, self-employed, filed for UI on 330, was instructed by the state that we, quote, self-employed, must apply twice in order to get denied twice. At this point, the link appears in your dashboard to apply for PUA. That process took until 512 to receive my first $600 check. I'm not sure what this is for. I'm just happy with the Florida debacle. I got anything. Thank you for the great updates. You know, Ellen has been detailing the debacle from state to state. And let's recap, no matter what state you are and you're tuning in this afternoon. When you apply for PUA benefits, you are applying as an independent contractor. I don't care if you are employed by your business or you are an employee of your, of your LLC or your C-Corp. You are still an independent contractor. That's how they view you when applying for PUA. But in some states, you're required to apply for unemployment benefits first and get a denial before applying for PUA because that's the way they want to do it. In other states, they don't require that. In some states, like in California, EDD, they just have one application total, total for both PUA and uh, unemployment to do. <laughs> but in the case of Florida, you got to apply twice and get two denials. What going on, Florida? Now, we've detailed in the recent days how some states have really lagged, and some states have been great. California's been great. Uh, Alabama has been wonderful. Ohio's gotten on the ball. New York, upstate New York, had a debacle last week. Texas and Florida have been the worst. No surprises there. And the ones that are sort of meandering around are Kentucky and Hawaii. I think someone jumped in the comments on Nebraska. So if you're watching from another state that I just didn't cover, drop in the comments below what happened from your state and how has it gone on. So let's get right to the questions. Sean Lassus, according to EDD, so this is a California reader, that's California EDD, when you call now, you can't even reach a live person. Well, that's been the case since day one. It's, according, it's a recording now that disconnects you. Charming. Welcome to California. Many are upset. By the time they fix this, the six extra, extra $600 will expire. LOL. Great videos, by the way. You rock. Well, thank you, Sean. You rock, too. Uh, don't worry. The money is not going to expire based upon the inability to get someone on the phone. But very, very disconcerting. Uh, Norma May. Thank you for reading my question. I try to call many times. No answer. I believe Norma's in California, but I'm not, I'm not positive. She's had a problems with the call center as well. Marco Norato. Hey, I love the channel. I love your name, Marco. You're very knowledgeable. Thank you. When do you think EDD will contact us to increase our weekly benefit? Never. <laughs> or will they open a portal for us to submit documents? Um, Norma's been saying that there is no place to submit documents. And I think on yesterday's update for Norma, who wants to increase her benefits, um, I, I advised her to put in the mail, send it express mail, only $3, priority mail. They're communicating by U.S. mail, um, so why not you do the same? I would just get that over to them, and then if they do open a portal uh, or a place, then do it at that time. I would also search, search around, just Google and just Google, and see if you can get an email address of someone. I mean, that's not the best matter. The best matter is really putting it in the mail. Uh, ED said that by May 20th, you can, said by May 20th, you can submit the documents, but as you can see, nothing yet. Hmm, interesting. Keep us up to date, Marco. Michaela, Af Aphrodite. Thanks for the reply. I'd love to show you my screenshot of what I got likes on what I what it looks like on mine. I found I got a confirmation number. I'm supposed to be getting something in the mail, but I have it now. When I try to file a new claim is new, it won't even let me. It says you currently have a claim being processed. Well, that's good. I mean, that's a good thing to hear. And now cannot make one. So I've been waiting for anything. I don't know if I made a mistake. It's been over 15 days. 
Uh, 15 days is not that long, but Miss Aphrodite, what I would do is I would click around in the other tabs to see if you can certify for benefits, as it's sort of a running line that I've been saying on this channel for PUA. If you submitted your application your, and your claim, but you haven't seen payments, uh, just click around a lot of tabs. I don't care what state you're in. Click around the tabs on the portal and see if you can certify for benefits. If you can, then that means you've been approved, and they may not have stated somewhere else in the portal you've been approved. If you can, you can... You, you could then certify for benefits for the respective weeks you're impacted by COVID-19, and that starts the payment processing, and then your payments will be sent. So click around. It's always because sometimes they don't update one part of the portal that you'll see somewhere else they have. Ricardo Hall, thank you, LA. Thanks for the great advice. Well, thank you, Ricardo. I answered Ricardo's question yesterday about escalating benefits, which is a big issue. Kimberly Valentino, hey, LA. Thank you so much for all you do in updating us. Well, thank you. You rock. Well, you rock too, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Kevin Lee, hey, LA. Spoke with a rep today from TWC, asked approval and should be tomorrow. But here in Texas, they have a two to three wait days. Uh, wait days on my back pay. Totally still ridiculous having to wait five weeks for benefits. I'll keep y'all updated. Well, thank you, y'all. Keep us updated, Kevin. Um, I know uh, my heart is with you folks in Texas and Florida where your governors haven't really done much of anything and now it's a debacle when it comes to PUA. So keep us updated. Motivation. Oh, stay with this video. I know we're about six minutes in, but stay with this video to the end because I'm going to drop a bombshell about PUA, a bombshell about PUA. If you haven't heard it, it was not widely reported. If you haven't heard it, you need to hear it at the end of this video. I love a good cliffhanger. Uh, motivation through inspiration education. Hey, LA, I, LA Late, I saw you my UIB approval, finally the portal for New York, and said I'll be getting 182 weekly. Not sure why I'm not getting the full amount of 504. Also, I don't see anything for PUA 600. Any advice? Thank you for all your help. So great question. I love this question for motivation through inspiration in New York. So this is what happens sometimes with these PUA and UI websites. They sometimes um, say you're approved for the benefits of a particular week, but they don't mention the $600. Don't worry. You're getting the $600. They sometimes just don't put it in there. It's it's sort of like it's assumed you're getting it. It's very weird. Um, so the fact that you have a 182 amount approved somewhere in a tab is great. You got one of your weeks certified and ready to process for payment. Now, motivation, what you need to do is go in there and make all sure all your respective weeks from the past are certified for benefits that apply to you. And going forward, do the same. You don't just sit back and hope for one check or one A2. If there's other weeks, you need to certify for those weeks. Don't worry about where the 600 appears in the portal. That's simply just a an accounting technical website issue. You're going to get $600. In some cases, and this is important for everyone from every state that's watching, in some cases the 600 comes from a different um, processing plan. So sometimes you get it by a, a different manner that you get the, 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 the base, base benefits. Now, how do you raise for maximum benefits? Um, you know, basically write a letter, uh, upload it into the website, show your 2019 earnings and, and make a, and make a, a contention for it. And good luck and keep me updated. Vicki Barringer, I'm in Colorado. The minimum payment is 223 per week plus the 600. Wow. Cal Colorado pays a lot for minimum benefits, 223. Some states that's almost maximum benefits. Wow. Good to know. Um, all right. So here is the bombshell. Whew. If, and you wouldn't know this unless you also watch our second stimulus check video from today. So, as you know, the $600 benefit add-on for PUA is from March to July. That's CARES Act 1 approved in, you know, a few weeks ago in, in March. Um, after after that date, it doesn't continue. You don't get the 600. You basically get your, your, your normal benefits under the state. This is the same if you're also unemployment, uh, unemployment benefits. You get this 600 add-on from the federal government from March to approximately July, middle July. Okay, so last week, a week ago today, as you know, the, the House passed the HEROES Act. And under the, or, and under the HEROES Act, the bill called for extending the $600 weekly add-ons from the federal government, from the CARES Act, to January 2021. Well, guess what? Today, Senate Republicans uh, that lead many, many committees, including the illustrious Mitch McConnell from K Kentucky, said, good luck. You are not going to ever see an extension of the $600 weekly benefits of PUA 
passed a lot. They say it's absolutely never going to be approved by the Republicans in the Senate. So, um, with that news, if you are getting PUA now and you're getting that $600 a week now, um, don't expect to see it. And, and if you're still impacted by COVID-19 into July, don't expect it, as of today's recording, to see it pass July. You'll be back to basically the minimum benefits of state unless you ask for escalated benefits. As always, if you have any questions about today's Thursday taping, drop them below by Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we'll feature them in tomorrow's recording. As always, stay in the light for more.